I decided on the case that I wanted to use for my 3950X build. However, I ran up against a little bit of a snag. Let's chat about that. All right, so this is the case I decided to use for the build. Super excited to get this. It's the uh, Inwin 925. Uh, very clean case. Uh, it's not the case I really wanted. I, wa I wanted to get my hands on an Inwin 928, but they don't make them anymore. They're sold out. I can't find one anywhere. So I uh, went this route because I wanted something a little different. And yes, I want to have a nice clean water cooling rig. And this is what I decided to put it in. However, I opened up the uh, box here um, today and I found a little bit of a problem. You'll see here on the very front, a couple decent scratches. And I'm not too thrilled about that because they're right on the front of the case. Now, if it was on the back, I mean, well, I'd be annoyed. I'd be like, well, okay, get some black paint, whatever. File down this sharp edge, touch it up. Uh, but it's on the front and it's right near the logo, which is gonna be lit up. And frankly, uh, the IO is on the front and I am really disappointed that this is how it was. And pull them over the box and they got these on each side pretty well protected inside of a big black bag. And fr frankly, there's no reason for this to have happened. So there's no holes in the boxes or anything. So this had to have happened pre-packaging, meaning it was damaged before they put it together. <sighs> a little frustrated. Now I've reached out to Inwin. I'm waiting to hear back what they might have for a solution. I'm hoping they just shed me a new case, give me a label to send this one back. Um, but I'm not really sure on how they're gonna handle this type of a situation. Um, I did send them the video of me unpacking this in the very beginning. Regardless, this is the case I'm going to use, either this exact one if they don't work with me or, uh, and I'll figure something out, or another one of these. We'll see, whatever it is. So let's, uh, let's tie, kind of dive into this and why I decided to go with this case. First off, very clean. I mean, this thing is very polished. It's an all aluminum case, basically. Uh, nice tempered glass uh, front and back which I think is really nice. It's got a radiator support and um, you can do up to a 360 in the front if you remove the um, hard drive cage, which is in here and I'll show you that in a second. And you can do 360 on the top. And the other appeal with this, which I decided to go with, after I take off this front, and you know, these screws are really interesting. They're just these little aluminum machine screws, which I actually really like. That's how simple it is to take this off. Another reason I decided to go this route is I'm going to be using a bunch of these throughout the case. And these are the uh, Inwind Crown EC120s and um, they do daisy chaining. So I won't have to worry about a whole bunch of wires that I have to worry about cable managing. I can route them through this and uh, hopefully it'll be really nice and clean. Once we get inside of the case here, we see a couple things. First off, this is advertised as being able to support up to an EATX motherboard, which what's going in here is, it's the X570 AORS Extreme motherboard. I'm gonna put my 3950X uh, processor on here. It should allow for a nice, clean build. I'm excited because I also want to take advantage of potentially a vertical GPU here. So I'm probably installing a, um, a riser bar once I get this in here. And then we're going to put a 360 rad up top, which I got a couple of these from uh, course, or, yeah, the Corsair ones. These are made in conjunction with the Hardware Labs. So these are really nice radiators. At least they should be. I, I love Hardware Labs. I use them in my uh, main build, uh, my Genesis build. So I got a... One for the front, a 360 for the front, and a 360 for the top. Now, I was playing with the idea of doing um, the CPU only as water-cooled and then leaving my GPU air-cooled, but I just don't think that that's going to look pretty enough. So I am going to be uh, water-cooling an RTX 2080 TA, uh, RTX 2080 Ti Strix card from Asus. And since it's only going to be the one, I should have enough thermal junction, if you will, or thermal dissipation, I should say, to uh, take care of the cleaning these cards. Uh, I'm not intending on massively overclocking anything. This is more of uh, an editing rig, and that's what I'm going to use it for, that and some gaming. And I'm, I really want to see how that compares to gaming on 
my 9900K with the 2080 Ti's on it. So that's what we're gonna be doing here. So I'm gonna put 360s front, 360 top. The one thing about this case that I find very strange is there's no radiator support for the rear. All they do is give you a spot for three 120 fans, which is nice to help pull some air out of the case. But I think a design flaw of this case is the fact it doesn't support a rear radiator. I don't know why they did that. I mean, they, they definitely, in this design, they could have very easily included the, the room or the ability to put an additional radiator on the rear. Uh, so if that's a disappointing piece, there's, there's two things that in this case to me are really disappointing. That, and then secondly, is that they don't allow for 140 millimeter fans as the implement. I'd love to be able to have a 420 top, 420 front, 420 rear, well, that would be the ultimate case for this type of a, uh, of a case. But regardless, it should be fine with the 120 base for the fans. And then when you turn it around here, <clears throat> we're gonna take off this rear panel. You can see that you're gonna, to uh, have to do some really nice cable management in here, which is a main reason why I decided to go with those AC Crown one, uh, 120 fans. 140s would be lovely to be able to fit in here, but they're not. Uh, the AC Crown 120s. Since they're daisy chainable, I won't have to worry about cable managing a whole bunch of fans. And in fact, since I'm going to be doing very limited uh, drives in here. I'm just going to be using M.2s. Um, my cable route management is going to is going to be pretty minimal. Pump and my um, cables that will be coming in from Cable Mod yet, which I haven't got those fully set up. This is going to be more of a black themed build. Part of the reason I went with this, and I'll show you that uh, probably in the next video with the rest of my parts. But I wanted to go over the rest of this um, case here as to what makes it appealing. You can mount three and a half inch drives here if you want to. You can also mount two and a half inch drives. Two and a half inch drive here, two and a half inch drive here. And then this is the sled bay where you have additional drive mount space. Now, you have to remove this drive bay in order to be able to put in a 360 front radiator. That doesn't bother me at all because frankly, I won't be using this and it'll just free up the uh, base of my, the base of my uh, chassis here. So. I'll have a nice, clean looking, uh, water cooled build. As far as tear down goes, you can remove these both front and rear, and you can literally remove or take apart basically the entire chassis, which I think is going to really make it a nice, clean, and easy to work in build. Well, all you do, and I'm just going to go ahead and take off these drives or these uh, radiator sleds. Take these off. Yeah, take off this one too. Okay, so you take these off here, and one front fan and radiator sled, and then the top fan and radiator sled. Nice and clean. And then to work on the rear, you have these captive thumb screws, which are very clean. They're spring loaded that comes off for you to put in your, your rear fans. A little extra room is all we needed to get a, a, a radiator in here. It's just a little frustrating, but is what it is. And then they make the cable management nice and clean because they route everything out the back here and then down through. So this case, one, while it is really nice. I don't want to sound negative. I mean, it is very nicely made. Um, I just think they just could have made this a little bit better with a few extra details that they just, for whatever reason, didn't pay attention to, if you will. Attention to detail, right? The other thing, and I don't want to be negative on this case because, again, I, th I think it's beautiful. I hate when they have this brushed aluminum like this. It marks and scratches up so easily. I mean, you get fingerprints all over it and dust and uh, anyway, this is going to be exciting to work in. Should be nice and clean, but I'm very curious to see what they're going to do about this scratch on the front. This is just a quick overview of this case is what this is and what the basis of this build is going to be. I didn't want to go into a long video 
Uh, I am needing some information. I was hoping to be able to actually start this build today, but I needed to get a video out for one. And two, I'm waiting for a uh, response back from Inwin with regards to how they're going to hopefully make this right. I mean, it was damaged by them. I'm hoping they just do the right thing. Uh, send me a label to return this and send me a new case. Um, if not, well, we'll talk about that too and we'll proceed from there. Uh, regardless, this is what it is. So short video today, I just wanted to touch on what I'm using uh, for my build and why. And uh, that's about it. So anyway, hopefully you did like today's video. If you did, you know what to do. If you didn't like it, you know what else to do. Hopefully it's not that. Please hit that subscribe button for me and we will see you in the next one. Thanks, bye.